I will introduce my colleague and my friend, Dr. Walid, Professor Walid Riyad. He is an eminent consultant anesthetist and interventional pain management physician in Danat Al Emirat Hospital in Abu Dhabi. And he is also serves as adjunct clinical professor of anesthesiology at Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi. Dr. Walid has a long experience in the field of multiple certifications. With multiple certifications, he got the master degree of anesthesia from Alexander University, Egypt, and PhD from Al Azhar University, Cairo, Egypt. And also in Saudi Arabia, he works for many years there as a consultant, and he got Saudi board and Arab board. Dr. Walid, in the last five years, was working as a consultant anesthetist in Cornish Hospital in Abu Dhabi, and he invented the pain management, especially for the obstetric and gynecology, and he has his clinic there for five years. Dr. Walid also works, and he is a member of uh, the Gulf pain management, and also in uh, Nizora that introduced many workshops in the Middle East twice per year at least. His expertise in his field leads him to publish more than 60 articles and research papers and references. And his study was focusing on managing pain in different medical environment. He also received several awards from the best for the best researches from Canada Anesthesia Society and King Saud University Hospital and Toronto Universities. And he presented his work in all cont continents of the world. Dr. Walid, you are welcome and the board is yours. Sure. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am going to speak about the management of endometriosis, pelvic pain. Uh, for both anesthesiologists and for uh, pain physicians. Uh, this presentation will be a little bit different from what you used to hear in these kinds of meeting. And all information I'm going to present today is maybe new for many of us, but all of them are uh, evidence based. I'm going to start with a short introduction. And by the end of this presentation, you will be able to understand what are the mechanisms and types of endometriosis pain, what are the surgical procedure is done to control this pain, what are the pain medication used for these conditions, and anesthetic consideration for patients with severe endometriosis pain coming for surgeries, and what are the interventional pain management? And I'll give you uh, two cases from uh, my practice. At the end, we'll take uh, end with the conclusion. So I'm going to start with the introduction of these two cases. Okay. So case number one, she's a 44 years old female presented uh, with diffuse lower abdominal pain started five years back. At time of presentation, her pain score is eight to nine over 10. Pain is fluctuating, increased during the menstruation. And she's also associated, her pain is also associated with deep dyspareunia. Patient was in uh, narcotics and hormonal therapy with a uh, minimal effect. She presented in our institution by her uh, uh, by herself and the obstetrician uh, gynecologists want to do a laparoscopy. They did a laparoscopy for her. They find a severe adhesions, a condition we called a frozen pelvis, meaning that the nothing could be done from the surgical site and the patient preferred to a pain management clinic. So no surgical intervention and failure of uh, conservative medical treatment. Second patient is 38 years old. She's obese patient, presented with right lower quadrant abdominal pain for the last 11 years. Pain started gradually after her cesarean section and become severe and distressing in the last uh, three years. Pain score is all the time six to seven over 10. And around the menstruation week, pain increased to eight to nine over 10. 
is vision specifically went to many subspecialities seen by many people, but there is no uh, definite uh, diagnosis for her condition. Vision, of course, was a lot of NSAID and narcotics with no effects. So I'm going to come at the end of the presentation to tell you what are the management of these two patients. I'll start first with the definition of the chronic pelvic pain. This is definition I think everybody knows. It is non menstrual related pain below the umbilicus that has continued for more than six months. This is present in all books and we all understand this uh, uh, definition. However, the recent definition is different. The recent definition, which is more applicable to our patient, it is a cyclical pain that has significant cognitive, behavior, sexual, and emotional consequences. I think this is more better than describing our uh, chronic pelvic pain patients. The most common three types of chronic pelvic pains are endometriosis, interstitial cystitis, and irritable bowel syndrome. And today we are only discussing about endometriosis. So what's endometriosis? It is a hormonal dependence inflammatory condition characterized by presence of abnormal growth of endometrial tissue. It's present outside the endometrium. It is not a rare problem. It's a common problem. It affects around one of each 10 of ladies in the reproductive period. Ambition will suffer for, for pain for 10, 20 years. It can start as early first menstruation and can continue till end of the menopause. The main three symptoms are non cyclical or continuous severe pelvic pain associated with dysmenorrhea and deep dyspareunia. This is the main symptoms that can trigger in your mind that this patient may have endometriosis. It's also associated with dysuria when the bladder is involved, dyskesia, pain identification when the rectum is involved, and of course, most of these patients are infertile. Where this endometrial tissue found? So commonly the abnormal endometrial tissue will found in the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. And this is the most common site and this is the easiest type to treat. However, the pain can also present in the peritoneal surface, as you can see here in this picture. Or it after sometimes infiltrates the peritoneum and goes to the uh, organ itself. Like you can see here, it's already got into the subperitoneal, or we call it deep infiltrate. It goes inside the tissue of the organ itself. And this is very difficult to treat. It's also present in the rectovaginal space. Endometrial tissue can also present in the scar following cesarean section or hysterectomy. And it also goes in the bladder and the ureter, and this gives dysuria or also goes on the bowel, commonly in the rectum and the appendix, and this call give to dyskesia. Very important, it would give us a lot of pain, is a deep pelvic nerves involvement, anterior abdominal wall involvement, and abdom abnormal, uh, abdominal skin. It also can disseminate through the blood vessels into the diaphragm, pleura, lung, pericardium, and the brain, but this is actually very rare. When the, uh, uh, I told you this is an inflammatory condition and with inflammation started, it eventually ended with uh, a lot of scarring and adhesion. As you can see here in this picture, there is a lot of adhesions to the surrounding tissue and so anterior abdominal wall. And these adhesions will lead to pulling on the belly floor muscles, pulling on the nerves and pulling in the blood vessels giving severe pain. Based on this, the endometriosis divided into four stages. Minimal stage and mild stage, stage one or two, and moderate or severe stage, stage three or four. This depends on the severity of the condition, amount of the infiltrate or implant, location, depth, deep infiltrate, and size of the cross. Of course, as a pain physician, we'll never see stage one or stage two, but always we patient on stage three or stage four refer to us. These stages are very debilitating, they are difficult to treat, and usually refer to the bank uh, management clinic after failure of medical and surgical treatment. 
So based on the above pathophysiology of the endometriosis, we can end up with different type of endometriosis pain. Actually, four types can present. We can have deep uh, nociceptive uh, endometriosis originating from the pelvic floor muscles, either by deep infiltrate or pulling on the uh, muscle itself. So the pelvic uh, uh, nociceptive pain is different from the superficial pain. It is a little bit more diffuse, not uh, centralized, or patient can directly point to it as superficial somatic pain. Pain can be also visceral from the invasion of the uh, organ itself. Then we have a sympathetically mediated uh, pain, pain originated from the nerve and in, with involvement of the sympathetic uh, nervous system. And we have two types. We have a first a peripheral sensitization, and after some times, it's called uh, central sensitization affection of the brain center in the brain. And this condition is really, really bit, very difficult to treat. And the pain type here is burning. And we can have also neuropathic uh, pain from the infiltration of the nerves or bullet on the nerve. And this pain here would be sharp tingling uh, pain. So we have different types of uh, pain. So the treatment cannot be only one type of one uh, amount, uh, one group of medication. You have to treat all of this and you have to differentiate. You will be able to differentiate which kind you have from, from this. And sometimes the patient have one or two or three and this come by experience in order. You need your experience in order to understand this patient perfectly. So how can uh, endometriosis diagnosed? Usually the pelvic exam, you can see a cyst, or you can feel a cyst or the nodules. Ultrasound is the second way to, uh, to diagnose this condition, usually not conclusive. MRI and CT sometimes is there, sometimes is not, but it's usually we have a CT or usually most of the time we have an MRI, usually for surgical planning and interventional pain management. We always require an MRI of the pelvis for these patients. However, the golden standard for treatment is the laparoscopy. As you can see here in this picture, this is the endometriosis. You can find this is a superficial uh, infiltrate. This is endometrioma. Endometrioma means that affection of the ovary. We can have deep infiltrate and we can have an adhesion. So in this patient, this patient is stage three or four. This patient here is stage one, two. So how is this patient usually treated? So from the surgical side, there are two kinds of treatment. There is medical management and surgical management. Medical, as I said in the beginning, this is a hormonal dependent uh, inflammation. So we give hormonal therapy, usually the combined oral contraceptive pills, which high concentration of estrogen and progesterone, or gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. This is a second group of medications. So usually this is the surgeon start when they diagnose this patient. This is the first step of uh, treatment. If this failed, also with non steroidal anti inflammatory if this failed, they go for surgical uh, treatment. The surgical treatment is removal of endometriosis implants. And this is, could be very long procedure in stage three or four. It can go to four to five hours. Also, they try to do a uterosacral nerve ablation by cutting the nerve to the su supply to the uterine by uh, removing parts of the uterosacral ligament, or they can excise the presacral uh, plexus over the uh, sacrum to eliminate this pain. And the last step uh, surgeon do is hysterectomy and bilateral salpingoevorectomy. This is actually not an easy decision, especially for patients who do not complete her family size. Also, it is, does not guarantee that pain will be disappeared because as we said, there is a deep infla, infla, uh, implant all over the pelvis. So if this failed, usually the patient refer to us for the patient with persistent post endometriosis pelvic pain. And this is very common and I see each day three to four patients with severe, very, very severe pain with, from endometriosis with failure of 
this statement. So medical management, what the usual medications they give. So usually there is multiple uh, degrees of or multiple uh, amount, multiple groups of medication use. So usually you start with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and you use also oral opioids. Usually from the surgeon size, you use either thermadol or morphine. However, we can use also oxycodone, uh, codeine, and hydromorphone, or we can use uh, opioid batches, either fentanyl or uh, butyram buprenorphine. So this is opioid and non-steroidal. And there are other four groups of medication can be used based on the types of pain. So we can use tricyclic antidepressant, commonly we use emetriptyline. However, norotriptyline is also good, but and less sedative, but it's not available everywhere. We use anticompulsant, gabapentin, or brigabaline. We use muscle relaxant. The most commonly used for relaxing pelvic floor muscle is the cyclobenzaprine, the central acting muscle relaxant. And we use SNRIs, which we use deloxetine, and literally we use uh, velafaxis. So this, so we have six groups of medication used to treat endometriosis pain. You should know the type of pain in order to give the correct uh, treatment for it. If the patient is if the patient has a neuropathic pain and you give uh, opioids, it's not going to work. If the patient has a deep pelvic floor muscle pain and you didn't give muscle relaxant, pain will not disappear. So you have to know which type of pain in order to give which kind of medical management. So as we understand the complexity of treatment of this uh, pain, so if pain, patient with pain, uh, severe endometriosis pain and coming for surgery, either major adhesorized surgery or other surgery, what we should do, so and set a consideration. So number one, please, please, please don't stop the morning pain medications. So I, I see many times that the doctors stop the pain medication. Don't stop the pain medication. You will, you will decrease the plasma level of this medication and will end up with giving more. So you consider this medication as antihypertensive. We never stop antihypertensive in the morning. Again, don't stop pain medication in the morning. Number two, don't forget to add the patient on born pain medication in the post-operative periods. So when you're writing post-operative period, include the patient's own pain medication. The patient will stay with you two to three days, and if the medication is not giving, not only patient have pain, but also have a withdrawal symptoms. Many of these medications cannot be stopped abruptly. There is a way to stop this medication, and if you stop it directly, you will have end up with withdrawal symptoms. Third point is you need to have regional anesthesia better than the uh, general anesthesia. You have a better pain control, you prevent central sensitization, and you may decrease inflammatory process. So regional anesthesia better than general anesthesia. If you need to give general anesthesia for any reasons, remember that the patient will need 25 to 30, 50% extra of narcotics. It's very mandatory to do an analgesic block for these patients to control and arrest the pain. And don't discharge the patient outside the recovery room with high pain score. Pain will not settle uh, by time. And obviously, uh, paracetamol and diclofenac, which you commonly write in the bus are not enough. So you have to adequate pain control before sending patient to the uh, world. So what are the interventional treatment we should do? So we discuss about medical management, then if the medical management, surgical management failed, the third step is interventional management. There is many things we can do. This will depend on the patient's symptoms, depend on your examination, depend on the laparoscopy images and MRI. So we have first as a plain blocks, so rectal sheath block or tab block can be used, but we commonly use a, a QLB block because it's also affect the visceral vein if the patient have a deep pelvic vein. Nerve block, whatever the nerve is involved in the pelvis, we can block this nerve, either elingonal or hypogastric nerve, lateral femoral cutaneous, femoral obturator, bidental. Each nerve will block separately depending on where the patient have its pain, because some of this nerve could get infiltrated with the endometriosis itself. 
Then for sympathetically mediated vein, we can do lumbar plexus block, superior hypogastric uh, plexus block, galvanic and bar block, again, depending on the level of the vein. I'm not going to go, go into details of these blocks because this is a beyond of uh, our aim here. And for centrally mediated vein, we give infusion of ketamine and lidocaine. There is multiple protocol for that starting from three hours to five days. Also with ural steroids, many times used for this patient, either codal or intranumerate, and end up with the peripheral or central uh, spinal cord stimulations. So you can see there is a majority or multiple intervention technique can be used for this kind of patients. The choice depends on patient symptoms, your experience, and how the patient will tolerate these conditions. Now I'll go back to the uh, cases I was discussed in the beginning. So this is a patient with the frozen pelvis that refer to the main management linking after failure of the medical treatment and inability to do any surgical treatment. So I examined this patient. Okay. So by palpation, there is a diffuse tenderness over the lower abdomen. There is decreased uh, sensation to cold and there is a positive carnal science. Carnal science is, uh, means that there is an involvement of the anterior abdominal wall. And this is very important to understand this test. So you put your hand on the area where is the maximum pain and ask the patient to flex. If pain increase, this is a positive test, meaning that there is an involvement of the anterior abdominal wall, either by direct infiltrate or, or by adhesions. So the patient has this positive test. So I start this patient on a medications. So I choose three medications. So I give patient gabapentin, cyclobenzaprine, and oxycodone. This was my choice for this patient. So pain decreased with this medication uh, to two to three. But however, the patient, sorry. Sorry. Pain decreased to two to three, but however, the patient, this patient was a, a working mother and she is unable to function because of the severe sedation. So pain decreased, but she is unable to work. So we have to do a intervention treatment. For this patient, I did a caudal epidural and injected 10 milligram bibivacaine, 80 milligram dimidrol and five ml of normal saline. Here you can see the needle. So this is the result. So there is 50% reduction of pain after one week. There is 90% reduction of pain three weeks after the uh, procedure. The patient was maintained only on cyclobenzaprine. Other medication was stopped and with hormonal therapy. Medication stopped gradually and patient discharged from my service after seven months with very minimal pain. This is the patient, second patient with uh, having a right lower quadrant pain for the last 11 years and was not diagnosed. By palpation, I found tenderness over the area, specific area of the uh, wound around seven centimeter from the middle to the end of the wound. Difficulty, I hear something like a felt small or mass, vision is obese, so I have difficulty to feel the wound from inside but I, I'm feeling something is not normal. There is absence sensation to cold at all. Bishop was not feeling the cold at all in this area. And I did for the ultrasound scan, and this is the picture. So you can see something black here. This is a scar endometriosis. So after the cesarean section, there is some endometri endometrioma came to the scar, and story story was growing over the 11 years. And it's good to the patient have been increased during menstruation. So it means that this is a, there is some endometrial tissue here. So what I, should, I did for this patient. I start here on amitriptyline for uh, one month. So it's only amitriptyline, one medication only. So the pain score was uh, four to five, the maximum pain score four to five. Then after that, I did an ileunguinal and have gastric nerve block. Here is the area that we can catch this nerve between the uh, internal oblique and transverse abdominis. 
and you can see the nerve and vessels here, and we can put our needle over this area here. And the pain score decreased to two to three. I offer the patient either aspiration of the cyst or uh, surgical excision of the endometriosis. The patient was not interested and was satisfied with the drop of pain score to two to three, and I didn't see the vision after that. So if you want to know more about uh, pain uh, topics, you can follow my YouTube channel. There is a lot of uh, article there. And this is Arabic channel for uh, patient if you want to share with your patient. This is for the lay people. And the short videos are available in my uh, Instagram as well. This is English and Arabic one or two minute video. I'm keep adding when I have a time. So in conclusion, endometriosis is a severe debilitating disease that affects the quality of life and of the patient and her family as well. Understanding the pathophysiology and type of pain is very crucial to better manage of this patient. Treatment of severe endometriosis is not an easy task. It is difficult and require a combination of medical, surgical, and interventional treatment. And thank you very, very much. Thank you, Dr. Walid, for managing of time first. And it is really a very informative lecture regarding pain management. And uh, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, there is no questions. There's no problem. It means that you're, you're fulfilling all the uh, queries for the audience. But I have a question, Dr. Walid. Yes, Regarding the injection, ultrasound guided for whatever, the quadratus lamporum or within the nerve block. In fer fertile female that has a period and uh, suppose that the age is ranging between 30 and 40. Do these injections isn't need to be repeated or you'll just give injections and relieve the pain for a period of time that may extend it to months or even even uh, some weeks or months? Yeah, it's repeated. So any chronic pain is, our, any injections of chronic pain is repeatable. So that's, right. there is no cure from chronic pain. There's no cure right. from diabetes. All injections are repeatable. We keep repeating the procedure. The duration is different. So some people two months, some people three months, some people six months, some people only two to three weeks, but all injections are repeatable. We try to so find, yes. It is important to reassure the patient during the first session of injection that you will come again. Yeah, patient will stay with us for, for endometriosis right. patient will stay with me between five to six years. Right, second question. These patients usually come for another surgeries like appendectomy or cholecystectomy, as you said, we have to continue their basal dose of pain management, uh, narcotics or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. In the post-operative period and the pain management protocol, we usually use the same protocol that the patient is continuing on that. And we have to add the post-operative pain management like the other people, I mean that, if you give 100 milligram pethidine intramuscular for non-endometriotic patient. So we will forget about what the patient is taking and the patient is on already and to give the same dose just to make it clear for our colleagues. Yeah, they will require, definitely they require higher dose. They have, they are on baby medication for a long time and their opioid receptors are upgraded. They require right. a lot of doses. If you see how much doses we are giving to this patient, you, many people will get scared of giving this amount of medication to these patients, but they require that. So we shouldn't be hesitant and say, no, this patient will give 10 milligram morphine and that's enough. No, it's not enough. Some of these patients will take in one session 30 milligram morphine and never touch it. Right. So we will go through the uh, dose effect, effective dose of the pain management and it is a matter of testing for the, anesth the new anesthetist. Yeah. So there is no quantification. Uh, I, I mean that fixed quantification of pain management no. post-operatively. No. Right. Each patient is different. Each patient is different. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. Dr. Talat, uh, Professor Randa Jiridin has a question. If you don't mind, uh, allow her to ask her Yes, Dr. Randa, it's OK. If you have your mm -hmm. microphone, you can go through by your question, mm -hmm. Dr. Randa. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so uh, my name is 
Ramadan, the religion of a professor in a Mysterian, a National Heart Institute. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Aranda. My uh, question uh, is, I have a colleague of mine, she has in the, in the, she uses, and can you hear me now? Can you hear we me? Hear no, we cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, it's clear now. So, uh, I have a colleague of mine. Uh, she has been that has reached the um, diaphragm and the pleura. And it's, uh, it's giving her a, a lot of pain. She's in severe pain all the time. Uh, what are your suggestions for her? And how are you going, would you attack uh, such a, a case? Yeah, did you hear the question, Dr. Walid? Yes, she, uh, Dr. Aranda has a friend and she had endometriotic uh, tissues in the diaphragm and in the pleura. And uh, she's asking about the, the, the plan of management of her. Okay, so diaphragm and pleura, usually the surgeon does not want to do anything for this. Okay, so she will end up with, uh, with anesthesia or pain management for her conditions. So depending on the type of pain, it's only if it's only somatic pain, she can be on narcotics. And usually if it's a condition like that, it will be narcotic batches so will be working for her. But if she have any nerve involvement, there is a neuropathic pain as well. I think we should add uh, one form of either amitrip, uh, thoracic antidepressant or anticonvulsants. Of course, no need here for muscle relaxant because this is high up in the pleura. There is no much muscles here, so muscle relaxers is not need to be added. So either narcotics or uh, a combination of narcotics plus uh, anticonvulsant or, uh, or uh, thoracic antidepressant, depending on the general condition of the patients. Okay, because there's some contraindication for each medications. So I don't know the patient, but there is, if there is no contraindication, she can go for whatever. But if there is contraindication, she has to refer to others. Okay. Medications. And uh, Dr. Yasser Rida has a question as well. Um, thank you, Dr. Walid. Uh, thank you for uh, MIGA learning. Uh, I'm just enjoyed by the presentation of Dr. Walid, but I have a question. Uh, uh, be because I make it like a case report, uh, 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 if you have an endometriosis like in the diaphragm, this is the case. Uh, mm -hmm. Do that erector spine bleed block have a role in, uh, in the... Uh, uh, treatment as intervention or not? Yes, it has a role. I'm sorry I didn't add it, but it has a role, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you.